Hi, Sam here, and today I'm doing a video on the OCD Recovery YouTube channel in regards to how lucky we are, or realising how lucky we are to have OCD at this period of time. Now, you're probably thinking, if you're in the midst of suffering, if you're feeling like shit, um, if your chronic guilt ramped up, um, if you're feeling constant panic, anxiety, you're probably thinking, what on earth is he on about? How can I be lucky to have OCD now? What What is he on about? Okay, so let me explain. Now, I did a post back just over a week ago on the OCD recovery group on Facebook um, of how lucky we are, and I explained it a bit on there, but I'm going to go into some more detail now in this video. Okay, so firstly, imagine, let's say 100 years ago, imagine having OCD then. How difficult would it be to explain to someone? Well, no, let alone. So what understanding would there have been back then? Okay, there'd been no understanding whatsoever. If any, very little, very lack of understanding. How alone do you think that would make you feel? OCD is a very isolating disorder as it is. It makes you feel very alone as it is now, let alone back then when there's very little understanding. I'm going to say there was no understanding back then. Okay, can you imagine how difficult that must be? Now, back then, it probably could have latched with different things in life, maybe religion, um, if there's different perspectives of life, different views, uh, different laws, um, slightly different rules in life. But OCD is still going to latch on to what you fear. It's still going to latch on to what you hold dearly. OK, OCD is going to target that. Can you imagine there having no help out there at all? Now, if there's hardly any understanding, there's not really much help, is there? My OCD is still very much in the dark as it is now. It's made huge strides, huge progress in recent years. But could you imagine back then, not even 100 years ago, 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, still massively misunderstood. So just imagine having no help out there. All right, just a slight little change in perspectives now. You're thinking, yeah, fucking hell. Could you imagine I didn't have this OCD recovery group? On Facebook, didn't have any WhatsApp groups, didn't have any any internet to even Google anything. Okay, initially Google to find out the symptoms and then actually be introduced to OCD. Could you imagine that? It must be very, very difficult. So imagine having no one to talk to, to understand. I mean, I've met some brilliant people with OCD. Uh, Mark's a good example, Harley on this channel. Um, we've actually met in real life, had a great chat, great laugh. Uh, could you imagine... You wouldn't have anything like that. You wouldn't even know if some. You didn't even know what OCD was, let alone if someone had OCD. Now with social media, um, the internet, WhatsApp, you don't just know they got OCD. You can actually talk about that and meet up with them and have a good laugh and become good friends because of it. Okay, we are very very lucky. All right, there was no WhatsApp groups back then. There was no Facebook groups of seventeen thousand five hundred members back then. Okay, no social media, no internet, nothing at all. It's very, very challenging. Now, obviously, everyone's life would have been different, but I'd have thought in those sort of times, life could have been quite challenging, let alone with OCD. You know, OCD must have been very, very challenging with OCD. Okay, we're very, very lucky now. Now, if I talk about a bit about myself, my own journey, um, and how lucky I was. So, um when I first come across OCD or, or Googling like, intrusive thoughts, things like that, I remember having thoughts at unwanted times. I thought, fucking hell, or just the chronic guilt or just latched onto something in the past or just the worst thing I could possibly think of. Why am I getting these thoughts? So that obviously led to some Googling, um, getting an appointment with doctors, okay? Um, so that, very lucky to have that. Now, if I didn't Google at the start, I wouldn't have known what OCD was. Obviously, we shouldn't keep Googling as, as that becomes a compulsion, a reassurance thing. But initially, when you first Google, it could be very helpful of understanding and being introduced to OCD in itself. Okay, I was so lucky to have a community that understands. Once I realised what OCD was and once I realised I had OCD, I was lucky to have a community that understands, like this Facebook group, um, to have YouTube, free content on YouTube, like these videos, um, to have WhatsApp groups, um, to have access to webinars, to have access to um one to ones all these different resources that can help you just got to look online there's plenty of information on ocd okay information of how it operates all different ways of getting better um might be some might be more effective than others but there are um lots of information on ocd 
and there's lots of recommended guidance um, and tools now to get better and recover from OCD. Okay, we are all these things that I'm listing now. Um, you're probably thinking, yeah, fucking hell, that's that's re sort of really opened my eyes. When I thought about, it, I was like, wow, we are very lucky. Really opened my eyes and changed my mindset towards yes. I mean, we've got this one chance. We, we, you're, you're given the life you get. You're dealt the hand you get. Okay, there's no point sat back crying and moaning how how shit OCD is, how bad it is, how terrible it is. Of course it is. It's a very difficult challenge and disorder. I'm never denying that. It, I, I, from my first hand experience, I know how tough it is. All right, but me whining and me complaining. I was used to complain all the time about OCD. Oh, why is it? Why have I had that fault then? Why can't this real event in the past budge? Why won't it go? Why won't it just fuck off? Okay, all these. How you feel? Why am I feeling like shit? Why do I feel so anxious? Why can't I just go out and enjoy myself, okay? All these things that latch into OCD and are what keeps you stuck, all right? Um, now, a main point is that the fact that you can you can read a book. Of course, you've got to apply it uh, persistently and correctly. The tools in the book, for example, how to stubbornly refuse to make yourself miserable, an absolute game changer for me. Of course, you've got to apply the tools properly, uh, but the fact you can do that, the fact that we have, we can do that, we can read, um, we can ask other people about the book. How did you apply it to your to your journey? Um, webinars, coaches on these YouTube channels. Uh, sorry, these these videos on the YouTube channel. The fact you can get advice on how to apply these tools. I mean, this would have never happened thirty, forty, fifty years ago. We are incredibly lucky. Myth of self esteem. Another book on the reading list. If if you said to someone I'll apply some unconditional acceptance, but just gotta um, try and work out what that means, then it's going to be very difficult, isn't it? Or reading a book like that, it, it introduces you, it, it lays the foundation, it, it applies the guidelines of how to adopt unconditional acceptance, how to change your perspectives, how to dispute your rational beliefs, okay, how to change your mindset, how to change your thinking, All right, being less rigid and being less black and white. Also, A Man's Search for Meaning, Paul David's book, Claire Weeks' book, all on the reading list, all very, very helpful books. And the fact that you can read them and make significant improvement, okay? I'm not just saying you read them and that's it, you're recovered. Of course, you've got to apply the tools persistently, patient, hard work. Of course you have. But the fact you can do that, that just shows how lucky we are that we can read a book and become, you, you, can, you can be significantly better from ACD just by reading books. Now, these proven methods of getting people better wouldn't have existed years ago, 20, 30, 40 years ago. All right. So I want to talk briefly about my my journey, where I am today, um, and sort of link it into hope. Um, and that I have been in your shoes if you're watching this video. Um, if you watch my videos, you... Excuse me. Um, if you watch my videos, you would know the first-hand first experience I've suffered of OCD. Um, it's been very difficult. It's been a very challenging journey, but as a journey, I'm so grateful for now. I've learned so much. My my life, I, it's, it's enriched my life. It's, the tools I've learned has empowered my life. Now, I try to say to people that I enjoy getting up out of bed. I I I I can't wait to see what a day has for me. Now, I wouldn't have even dreamt of that when I was suffering. I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to see what I just. I really don't want to move. I just want to stay in bed. Um, I don't want to face the world. Um, I'm so scared. I'm so locked up in chronic guilt, constant rumination. I didn't want to. Didn't want to enjoy anything. I just wanted to stick to just being in my safe zone at home in bed. Um, yeah, really, really tough when I look back now. But I, I like I said, I enjoy life. I I love it now, and I just want to provide that hope that you you can get there with hard work and persistence. Um, like like was said many times on this channel, it, I still have OCD, um, but it doesn't have me. I can, I mean, I, it, if I went back to performing compulsions, and it's most likely to come back, and I'd, I'd be struggling again. But I don't then fear having a massive relapse. Okay, if it does, it does. If I started feeling like shit again, if I was locked up, chronic guilt, twenty four seven, I wouldn't want that. It'd be a, it'd be a big inconvenience for me. Um, but I could get on my life and I could apply the tools um, and bring it for the ride and work on my beliefs or what's got me to here now. All right, there is massive, massive hope if you put in the hard work and persistence. 
all right, moaning and whining and whinging. Of course, OCD is difficult. I fucking know that, but it really doesn't get, it didn't get me anywhere. I wish it did. I wish I could just scream the ice down and that's it, I was recovered. That's not how it works. That's not reality. All right, no one's denying how tough it is, but moaning and crying, I was crying a lot. I've just said, blur, why me? Um, why has this happened to me? Someone help me. No one's going to come help you. People can guide you, of course, but only you can help yourself and get yourself out of it. Okay, you really can get better. So just a subtle shift in your mindset towards recovery and your mindset towards life. All right, just make, make huge changes just to, you know, I'm really going to give it a go. I'm going to really give it a best shot. Now, I remember coming to the realisation that, you know what? I really can't be arsed living life like this. I really can't be bothered to be in OCD's chains, in that mental prison where you're, look, my life is just coming more and more restricted. So much avoidance. I just thought, you know what? Fuck this. I'm not going to live um, by OCD's life anymore. I'm not going to live in its prison anymore. I'm going to go out there. If I feel shit, I feel shit. If I feel anxious, I feel anxious. If I feel chronic guilt, I feel chronic guilt. I'm just going to go out there, give it all towards recovery, put in the put in the work, apply the tools and bring it for the ride. Okay, I hope this video has been really helpful for you. If you have liked it, please leave a like, that is much appreciated. Any comments, I will happily read. Any feedback, any video suggestions you'd like me to do, um, I can happily take a look. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. Anyway, have a lovely Christmas and take care. Bye-bye.